Okay. It is Tuesday, September 13th. Conservation. Ron on. Pardon me? Ron on. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. You, you can officiate if you want to COVID yourself. Okay. It's there, though. Did you get the video? And I don't think so. Maybe they're on the phone. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. How are you feeling? You got your video and your audio off. No, you got your audio off. Little microphone. Little thing with the microphone. Yeah. Oh, there's Cindy. This We're is good. Broker. Can you give him a hand? Watch his tech support. <laughs> 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 oh, keep that's there's some great kids up there somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, and you're really doing this for two years. <laughs> All right, honey, I give up. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. No, nope, still can't hear you. We have our volume turned on, right? How you make out on this? I'm expecting it to be We did good. We, uh, we came around with the. Uh, was it Friday? You did some on Friday, yeah. Friday, too. Yeah. So. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It's got to be a story in here. That big one. Can you start it? No, we didn't do Clary. No, we did, um, we did one of How's that? Yay! I found it. <laughs> Good job. So, so I'm surviving. I'm into my sixth day of... What I thought I started getting it. I got tested on Saturday. Um, they don't say I need any meds or anything. And I've had worse colds than this. So, okay, good. Okay. So, you want to bring All me? All right, continue on. Okay, we're going to postpone the. Um, the minutes uh, we had a death in the family, and oh. life has been a little. All right, let's. We'll... Um, no worries. Together. Very sorry. sorry. Matriarch of the Amuso family died, and so it's been kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. So we're suspending the minutes approval yes. of um, yes. last meeting. Yes. Okay. Informal, informal non-keg. So we had um, phone calls regarding the regarding work that they're doing on the slope of non-keg down below the um, mm -hmm. stairwell. And I went up and looked at it this morning and talked to the engineer who happened to be there along with the grounds people and a bunch of other folks that just, they just, I just hit it just when they were there. And they're um, repairing one of the sidewalks and extending one of the sidewalks. So they're moving, they we're going to get plans, but we haven't gotten them yet. Um, the sidewalk is now going to go across the hill mm -hmm. on a diagonal. They're going to have to remove a couple of the apple trees that are in the orchard, but they're going to replant them. They're also um, going to do a new pollinator garden there. And they've got, they have um, straw wattles for, um, to, to keep any erosion out of, you know, from going down the hill. And they're also going to create uh, French drains to the, to the uphill side of the, of the new, newly constructed um, walkway. And it, the plans look good to me. I didn't see any issues. It's not jurisdictional. Um, so, Did they come up with a, a final figure on how much? Um, We're still waiting for that. 
Yeah, so if if they the if they go if they go above the ten thousand square feet, right. for um, how much disturbance? But that would not include that would not include the maintenance repair to the right to the. Um, they have a lot of pipe up there. Yes, and we get we will get drawings. We will get drawings, and we will get. Um, calculations as to how much land is being disturbed, and if they go over the five uh, uh, ten thousand square feet, then they will have to file under the stormwater bylaw, and they know that. So, I know I saw, I saw their engineer's email before I came in. Yes. Yeah. So. So they've already started this project. Yes. And Ned said Ned has not. Ned, Ned, it's not jurisdictional as far as he's concerned. All right. As long as it wasn't something someone was trying to slide by us, so okay. No, it will. And and I did I did impress upon them that it would be a really good idea for them to come into us first when they're planning something like this, just because they're so visible, and um, you know the neighbors worry a lot about potential runoff from the site. So I think they got the message. So Han is still on continue, but I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to meet um, out on the site with them this week. So maybe we'll have some um, resolution to this finally. And the folks that have purchased Greg Wellencamp's property at 28 Beachwood, um, she is <laughs> Mimi Harvey, I believe is on. They have sent us a planting plan for that project. And so I think we can finally close this out. Mimi? You're muted. You're muted. Hello, hello. So you submitted a planting plan for this project? I did, I sent it in uh, yesterday to the commission. I yes. You, so I, you know, you told me it could just be a hand-drawn plan. So I just, just thought, enlarged it, just to put where we were thinking about putting five trees for the time being. You know, we don't know what the planting term is long term, but you know, we got to get those five in for you guys. So she said we would like to plant a willow, two birch, and two maple. If we can find them locally. We also like many evergreens and dogwoods, but are looking for guidance so we can move forward with the plan, get any issues related to our property in line with the commission's rules. Was that before or after the communication she sent? Or she'd, you'd altered the list. You said yes, that before. you couldn't find the willows. That was, and before. that was the first one. The second one says the trees proposed are two heartleaf paper birch, one American hornbeam, one juniper, one Eastern red bud, and there were no native willows in stock and the maple were very large and didn't think would fit in the space. I'm not sure she wants a willow. And can you just remind me what's the jurisdictional? What's jurisdiction? This was, um, this was a project that had been um, ignored. Forgot. Proposed and it, I mean, it was a notice of intent mm -hmm. um, and it was never completed. Okay. But when we did the site visit for the certificate of compliance, it appeared that there had been trees removed and the trees were not a move to, removed according to any plan or nor were they on. So that was an outstanding part of the certificate of compliance that we required. So these trees are being planted where the other trees had been? Roughly. It's sort of hard to tell where they are. So Sally, I, I just have a question. Um, it was my understanding, and it's probably incorrect, that if there's an outstanding, if they don't have a certificate, a certificate of compliance for a notice of intent, you can't transfer the property. Happens all the time. So. How does it happen? I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. not attached. You have to ask the lawyers. But isn't it attached? It is attached to the deed. 
So, so in order for them to get the new owners to get the certificate of compliance, they needed to um, fix no, this outstanding. I'm not trying to make problems for me. Right. I just wondered how the, the land passed in the first place. I don't know. Just but as a means of enforcing getting, aha, she knows. But we're fortunate that they are going to plant the trees. Yes. No, I have no so, so how did that work? So we never heard anything about it. That settlement when we went. That's to how it happened. <laughs> so, we, that's so, so, so truly, we had no idea. And sure. then found out afterwards. So I said, and then we discussed it that you know about you know getting some kind of plan, put some flags out. But since it wasn't happening, I thought I should just come to you guys directly and get it done. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. We appreciate it. Really, we do. There's an mo there. Just. For anybody's future reference. Um, so anyway, um, I think that we need to consider what um, they've proposed, and we can finally close this thing out. That would be really nice. I make a um, motion that we accept their proposal. And I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Mamie, you're good to go. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great night. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Okay, and I talked to Annie um, about the her property. I'm, Jeff Lynch has been on vacation. That's her attorney. He's going to give us some uh, language and, and method to um, because the property has been divided as to how we're going to approach issuing the certificate of compliance on that property. But she does want to go forward and um, we will get the language. When you say go forward with what? Well, there was some question we when we said that um, there would be an ongoing condition of the trees being maintained, maintained and healthy. Um, she had some objection to that, um, but I explained to her that that was not something that her, she had two choices. Either she could withdraw the request for the certificate of compliance, or she could agree to the stipulations that were made. And so she said, fine. And so we're going to get some language and we're going to figure that out. So I have a question because she keeps raising, the, and it's I know it's separate from this, but she keeps raising the issue of the property across the road. Yeah, we. So, I found it. Yeah. found it. So I found it. I found. I found it. So we'll talk With about that later. We'll yes. talk about it later. Ah. Okay, good. Thank you. We'll talk about that later. Great, thank you. Okay, do we have to do anything? Like no. So, so as soon as we hear from Jeff, we'll we'll go forward with this. Okay. Yeah. Somehow or another, it was my understanding in the midst of all of this thing, um, the plan to build that. Um, She's house. not going to build the house. Okay, that's what I thought. That's not happening. Um, but she's going to, um, my understanding is she's going to, um, because she's divided the property and what was the barn is now going to become a house, that's going to be the second dwelling on the property. And um, it's in Lenox, so we have nothing to say about it. The only thing we have anything to say about is the, is the continuation of the health of the trees. But we have to figure out what property to attach it to. That's where it becomes a little complicated. So we're worried about the trees in Lenox, but that would be attached to the trees are in Stockbridge okay. and the, the house is in Lenox. So yeah, yeah, it's tough. It it there there are a couple there are the old Stockbridge Road, the the houses that border the old Stockbridge Road mm -hmm. generally in Lenox. But the property that goes down toward Lily Pond is in Stockbridge, and it's in the Scenic Mountains um, region. So it confuses people. Mm -hmm. um, and Annie got caught between the rock and the hard place on this one. So right. we're going to hopefully get that settled and keep great rolling stones on. Off, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and off the off the books. Elizabeth Strand, 12 Larry Long Cross Road. Okay, so we have Fleetwood working on that. Elizabeth Strand, is that Larry Long Road? Yes. Yeah, I'm meeting with David Cameron. 
Okay. Yeah, we coordinated wow. today. Yeah. All right. And our plan is to meet out at the pro uh, project, the site tomorrow morning at nine. Nine. Okay. Um, I know the commission had expressed interest in maybe tagging along or doing its own site inspection. So I don't know if tomorrow works for the commission, but if not, I could we could do it another time between now and the next hearing too. Mark, yeah. well, according to Mark, the site is pretty thick and not easy to get through. Yes. Yeah, so it, it may be a while um, yeah. tomorrow, and maybe if anyone wants to join, it's perfectly fine. But we could also we can also do it another day between now and the next meeting if that's better for anybody who's interested in seeing the site. I might be able to come down for a little while tomorrow, but then we have the funeral. So. Um. Clue me in here, 12 Larry Wog. That's um, the um, is Stevens place. As you could just go down Larry Wog on the left, there's the garage. They tore the house down. Mm -hmm. It went to Alexander Brown, Ann's son. Oh, yeah. And they are selling it to the Strands or have sold it to the Strands. Uh, it's on the corner of North Church and... Yeah, but it goes all the way up to Prospect Hill, or at least almost oh, all does. the way to Prospect Hill. Yeah. And it is thick. Yeah. yeah. It did. Right along the turnpike, right? Yeah. No, the other side. The other side. The other side. The other side. There's a big for sale sign, I think, on the corner. Right? Yeah, but I'm not sure that that's it. Okay. I, I think he's a lot on the made corner. to be dividing up the property. Well, uh, I, I can't go tomorrow, but would you just get to be in touch with Sally if there's issues so that we're aware? Well, what, I mean, what I could do is I could, after um, our work tomorrow, I could just shoot a quick email to the commission saying, hey, this is generally what I found. Um, if you'd like to go out to the site to review what I saw, um, if applicable. Um, we could schedule another time to do it. It works for anyone who's interested. I could try to do that because I think we've got at least two weeks to the next hearing, correct? Yeah, yeah it's two weeks, next meetings. Too. I would aim to get whatever report I need to generate done prior to that next meeting. So that Is there any flowing, <coughs> flowing downhill water there? It's not mostly flowing now. I mean, intermittent or no? not intermittent. Are there wetlands, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. They're sparse. It, it, it's generated from up above the property that's on Prospect Hill. It's got a bunch of wetlands that come down into it. And the NRAM is focused on a, a small portion of the overall Yeah, and we're not looking for we're not looking for confirmation on the entire site. It's only what's what's the um, to the house site itself. So we're not looking for the whole property okay. confirmed. Will the house site be marked? Uh, I, I have not yet, but I can do that if we can I mean, if we're going to look at it, we might as well know where the house is going to go. So if we want to schedule, say, a site visit for the CONCOM, and we want it um, at a time where the house has been marked out, is there a particular time that you know you would need to get that marked out without rushing? Just you know, realistically, where you could get that done. Uh, we can get it done before the next meeting. Yeah, I mean, if you if you go email back and forth with Sally or okay with us, we can we can get it done. Hopefully, I can mark out the. Potential house like tomorrow. Yeah, if you could just send an email to the concom that's yes. done, then we could mm -hmm. yep. work on it. Yeah, that'd yeah. be fine. Okay. Good. Right on. John? Hmm? Okay. Anything else, you guys? Okay. Sorry. Have to show the order. That's all right. <laughs> Who's chair? Under me. No, you are. <laughs> All right. Enforcement letter. You got it. You got it. Okay. Um, the strain power. 
one of two. It's John Fowler. That's, that's the one that's next to the boat club. Right. I, I've been there and I've seen it, and I'm wondering how that got away from us without anybody walking in the door. But your name is? My name's Kieran Yapel, and I represent Race Mountain Tree Services, and uh, Aston is out of town tonight. Couldn't be here, but was part of the team that has, we've been on site um, doing her tree care for longer than I've been uh, part of the group. But uh, needed to get here to try to figure out what the next move, move is or was. There was a miscommunication internally that had us mobilizing for that in July. Um, and it's progressed since then. So I've, uh, all my meetings have been on the site part of the team, so this is very new to me. Uh, so I've got a list of what came out, what's been put back in, and been here mostly to... Okay, I guess our question is how any of it got taken out and planned to be put back in without us knowing about it. I think that's our big question. <laughs> that's the just drifts to assumptions and miscommunications. Each party assuming the other party did this part of the program. Do you have a map of Do you have a map of what was that would show what was taken out and what the proximity? And I haven't seen the uh, It's all within the buffer zone. Buffer zone, to my understanding, is two hundred feet off of the of the bowl. So everything that came out was within that. Okay. Um, and it's not just the trees, you know. It's the ground vegetation. You yes. you have to leave at least seventy five percent of that. And I I have been there. And it's down to the soil on so, most of the site. Yep. Um, so there's three different parties. We were tree removal. Um, Wayland Nurseries was replant team. Um, and there was a third party that took it from cut low stumps as we left it to the way you have seen it, which is I have photographs. And when did you start your work? We were there July 6 and 7. Thank you. I, I have a question for you. Of course. Um, did it not occur to any of those people within this miscommunication chain that being that close to Stockbridge Bowl that there might be an issue that needed to come before us? It, it did, yeah, surface, but and, post. And, and nobody said, I'll go. Uh, I guess so, right. Okay. At least not from my perspective. So I have a question. In the enforcement order that was issued, it said that um, you're expected to supply a restoration plan by September 13th. So I was wondering if you were going to deliver that tonight. I don't have a set plan. Um, I was under the understanding that there would be requirements as to what was replanted and what was put back in, and that I would hopefully learn some of what the requirements for species and quantity would be this evening. I think we still need to understand what was taken out. Sure. And, and, and so we can then... And, 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 and it really isn't for us to make your restoration plan. That's okay. If you have to hire someone to do it, then you, you'll have to, but it's not really our job to go and fix the damage that you people have caused. Okay. Were you hired by the Fowlers? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and you said that another company, the Whalens, were then hired. So how? So Whalen, we don't install uh, okay. trees or shrubs. Right. Whalen Nursery does that, and they're the ones that plant for a stock. Okay, and they were also hired by the same homeowner. Yep. And this was with an intention to build. In that area? Is that there is no, a house so what there. We took out is, sorry, what we're taking out is dead, dying uh, white ash. Most were infested with emerald ash borer, a couple of dead sugar maples um, that we took in advance of them failing to hit the boathouse and deck and personnel, maybe. Um, stumps, too? Were stumps removed? Stumps were played with. I had nothing to do with that. So what is played with? Me? Uh, they're gone. We cut them to grade or just above uh, and they were ground down to to grade to it's a that. it's a big dirt desert. 
Friday. Yeah, I have there. fresh. I was there Friday. Yeah, I have, see it. I have fresh photos. I don't didn't know how to you can put them right blast right. that to you, or if I could just set the iPad up. Yeah. But is, is there any immediate um, plan right now to at least put some ground cover on that? Yes, that's wouldn't won't be us, but the there's a caretaker of the property and seems like he ought to be here. Initially the move is just to seed um, and then some of that will get moved or disturbed to plant more things. So but we need to see that and approve it before they yeah. do that. The planting. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Also, too, you talk about a replacement trees, but usually we have a say in which trees get planted uh, in the LPOD and in, in the buffer zone. And so you've planted trees. We have no list of what they are. And we're going to need that. Correct. We need to know what was planted. There. That I have for you at this time. Okay. I don't have a specific. And before. my second question, and then I'm, I'm done for a while. Of course. <laughs> So which company do you work for? Race Mountain Tree Services out of Sheffield, Massachusetts. Right. So why are you representing the owner? Why you particularly? Because I will own the company at some point. His, his father is the The owner the also guy. is in Malmo, Sweden at the moment. Right. Um, responsible. And you own what you, right. Um, he got thrown. He, he, he got, got thrown under right. the bus. He got thrown <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> He's being responsible. You, um, so these are, um, and of course, this is much harder uh, going backwards. Um, but these are new. These are photos taken Friday, um, Friday afternoon, midday or so. We can push them into this. Here, David. No, um, <laughs> Oh, I've seen it. So up close, in personal. Yeah. 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 Uh, so wow. these are remaining trees that a couple are far enough away that if they come at the house, mm -hmm. there'll be very minimal. Are you still planning on taking those minimal damage? damage. Uh, I'm done inside a buffer zone to you guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, uh, I'm not I never know on that site. Um, sometimes they just want to go. But yes, that, the idea was that. Uh, I mean, he must have had a game no, what the whole thing was going to look like She's before we stepped in. Correct. So was this part of taking those? It was. Did we stop you before these were taken down? Is that the only thing that's happened? <laughs> no, no. We out of gas. No. Um, <laughs> no. Basically, it was was like we there was something missed here, and this should have happened. Of course, the appropriate channel should have been moved through. Yeah. At the beginning, not at the end. Right. Um, so, Kiernan, are yes. those ones that are still remaining? I didn't. I didn't go on the property. I looked at it from next door. Are those hemlocks? I don't no. think so. uh, which ones? Is so this is the, the down on the lake. This is a standing dead hemlock. This yeah. one sugar maple. Um, I know this property extremely well, and I've been walking around on it for there's, most of my life. And most of the vegetation that's in that area is hemlock, and it is infested <laughs> with the woolly adelgid and theorinia scale. And uh, okay. hemlock has a yeah list. So of it's problems. so it's. All actually, you know, this is something that we need to consider as a commission is that if all the hemlocks become diseased around the lake, it is going to change the landscape of the lake significantly. And I think that we need to think about really seriously, you know, how we're going to approach this because this is not the first, or, or I'm sorry, it's not the last person who's going to come to us and say, all my trees are dying. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have to think about how we're going to, what we're going to ask them to do to maintain the cover around the lake because it's bad. I mean, the, the boat club trees are all, all infected. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think we'd be well advised to appoint like a subcommittee or something to study that problem? I surely think we need some sort of advice. I mean, I don't know, maybe Fleetwood has some thoughts about that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, um, maybe this maybe this particular enforcement case is 
right for kind of a pilot test or a, just a mini study just to get a sense of what's compatible with the existing landscape out there, what's native and what's not going to be susceptible to infestation by something in the near future as far as we know. Because oh, 36, 36 and 38 Lake Drive that we've just seen and passed both have pretty significant infestation of the woolly adelgid on their hemlocks. And the hemlocks are the primary um, species that's on this property. And it's, it's right now it's, it's covered, you know, it's really shaded and covered with these trees, but if they die, there's nothing so that's going to be in their stead. Don't, don't you guys have a treatment for Willie Adelgid? Yes. Yep. I thought so. Yep. But we and, uh, and others. Yeah. Right. Are they salvageable? Uh, I'm not the ones you're, not the ones I'm sure. Not the one you cut down. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, uh, to a certain extent. Yep. And within a certain threshold of, of investigation, of course. <laughs> so, bigger picture, we've spoken before about meeting with the Agriculture and Forestry Commission. I yes. think this would be a really good thing yes. to talk to the commission. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I can ask you a question about the, um, the cure for this. I mean, you can eradicate whatever it is that's happening to these hemlocks, but how do you do it? I mean, is it like a roundup kind of thing? Yeah, yeah either so, um, either a trunk drench or a soil injection where the trunk is wetted and the product is absorbed through the bark of the trunk from breast height and down, okay. uh, or soil injection. Stem injection, too. Stem injection. Yep. Did, are either of those feasible around the water? Yes. Are either of those feasible around the water? Yes. They make products that are usable within right. a, the a wetland. And it's repeated. You have to do it every couple of years. Yeah, every other, sometimes three, depending on what uh, product. I'd have to look at the water acceptable one. I think it's every other year. Every two. And it's expensive. It is. Yeah. yeah. And we'll add up. And is it hard to do? Physically, the treatments? Yes. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. In the scheme of things. Okay. But it's effective. Yes. Yep. So I think what we need is to see a plan of native wetland species of different strata, you know, trees, shrubs, Ground cover. Ground cover. Are you talking for this property? Yeah. But I think again the issue is this gentleman just took it all down. It's the other company that's replacing it. Yeah, but so, we need we need to find out what was taken down. Right. I think that's that's an important thing. If you can give us a list of what was taken down, what were the species? Yep. Um, How many dump trucks did you pull out of there of vegetation? Uh, no dump trucks. So what I won't have is cars. info on. <laughs> Anything that happened at, with stumps and a ground? No, no, no. We're just asking what you you're clear cutting, and everything you pulled out. Now I'm not trying to be. Yep. Play games with so, you. Uh, when I hear pull, I, I think of stumps being excavated out. So nothing was. We did no pulling of okay. stumps and the grinding of stumps. But ground uh, cover. Cut low stumps. No. So she, all you did is take trees. All we all we did was trees. Correct. So seeing there's some, nothing there. But seeing so much dirt. Who raked it all? Who got everything else out of there? That was a the, a third company. Oh, there's a third company now. Who's the third? Did you not mention the third company yet? I did not. The third company is uh, called a cut above lawn service. Um, it's complicated. So I don't think we're going, I don't think we're going to go anywhere until cut above comes in. I want to. I what is the enforcement order issued to? Spell that correct. I think the owner. the owner. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Now, do the all three companies are working for the owner, or were they subcontractors of you? Nope, they're all working for the owner. Just ask. Yep. Yeah. Could you? Could you? Just so I can make a note. I'm sorry. I'm missing. You're getting bombarded. Yes. But can I'd like to make a note of the three companies that work there. Yep. So could you give me their names and, and the towns they operate? Yes. Now? Race Mountain Tree Services. Okay. Is our company. Yep. We're out of Sheffield, Mass. Cut above. 
Um, I was wrong about that. I'm sorry. B, so that was tree removal. The next step would have been stumps and ground cover. That was true cut long hair. True cut. Also, two. <laughs> Subsidiary. T R U E. True green. Formerly of. True cut. Lawn care. Lawn care. Uh, okay, and where are they at? Uh, all I have is a cell phone number on the business card and email address as well. Um, is it a 413 cell phone number? <laughs> is, <laughs> is it a burner phone? 329. Um, uh, so, had no overlap. They were brought in through the um, property manager, okay. caretaker. So, what's the phone number you have for us? 413. 413. 329. By any number. 329. So that's Sheffield. 0791. Okay, and the last. A, that doesn't sound like a cell phone. I have a P.O. box on the business card. That sure, P.O. box. P.O. box 105. And oh, what's that? Okay, and. The mass. Ah, and the uh, last. Part? Whalen, Whalen Nurseries. Yeah. And what did they do? Not to they tried to fix it. They planted. They did plant. What did they plant? Right. They haven't arrived yet. Uh, we only put in two two and a half inch uh, red maple, one three and a half inch sweet gum, one three and a half to four inch. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the is there? We should get all this. Is there an email address? Yeah, I, I didn't I want just, to blast a bunch of things. How, how many trees are we talking through. about here? I, it didn't seem that many to me when I looked at the place. How many have been put in? Yeah. One, two, three, five. Five. So I think I'll make a list of five trees. So, okay. so two red maples. Red maples. Yeah. One three and a half inch sweet gum. One sweet gum. Yeah. And two Katsura. I wonder what the ratio is. Well, the Katsuras are uh, not native. and uh, Which is required. Which is required. Okay. Them. So those are going to have to go elsewhere. You can cut those on too. Gotcha. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. How many trees do you think you took out? Uh, 12 to 18. Okay. And of all fairly mature trees? Uh, ranging from two inches to 18 inches. Okay. Dead. And they were dead? Dead, dying. Yeah, that's yeah, right. always, Mostly dead. dead. Always the yeah. Case. Dying. Yeah. Okay. Patrick, did you have a question? Comment? Yeah, I, I just had more of a comment. Um, obviously, the town has spent a tremendous amount of time and effort and your money to figure out the best way to uh, treat hemlocks uh, using the resources of Ken Gooch, who was the Head of forestry help for the state of Massachusetts, and uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that both of my uh, Niagara, which yeah, which Ken feels is not um, effective at the combination of woolly indulgent and uh, and black scale beetle, and it's, and then Dunnetepra, which is, are both the indicatoids. And before we start encouraging people to like you know basil bark spray them right next to the water it might be better to really be encouraging stem injection if we're going to use those to save the trees yep thank okay. you and again i do think a conversation with the forestry commission would be uh, yes joint okay. meeting <laughs> so we're really we're really not trying to yeah, be mean to you. be mean to you it's just that these kinds of when something of this you know magnitude comes before us we're just like yep Wondering where I was in April. Yeah, yeah but you were responsible. You did come today, and yeah. we and we do appreciate that you came in, and we do appreciate that your dad called right away the minute they got the the minute they got the enforcement order. Oh, really? He called. Yes, he did, and and said that he was going to be out of town and that he was going to throw his son under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that, but <laughs> yeah, I think well, we know. I, I, yeah. he's sort of been the sacrificial lamb yeah, of yeah. a number For a of days. Other, <laughs> I mean, not only Race Mountain, but I think the, the people from Lee that did the lawn and yeah. who haven't yeah. done the lawn. I mean, you know, it's not your job to go tell them to do something to plant that. 
Yeah. And, uh, we have a, had, didn't have a gully washer today, but we certainly have significant rainfall. Yep. And how much of that dirt ended up in Stockbridge Bowl was anybody's guess. Well, fortunately, it's very flat it where is this flat. is. So, so has to drink the, the potential for for you know for could have been stormwater worse. runoff is not as great as it could be on a lot of parts of the lake. Um, but nevertheless, it's worrisome. Somewhere. So you will convey to the owner that we need a restoration and we need to see if yes. what's going yep. on. And so I'll be part of having it drawn up with, with right. one and Ketzer has come out. Emphasis so, on the yeah. closer to the water, the better. Do we have a listing firm for what is native and what they should, or should they be able to figure that out on their own? Yeah, there's, there's the smart. native wetland plant. Um, was it, the area wasn't really, was, it wasn't a wetland though. No. Mostly it was uplands. Yeah, it's mostly it's upland, but. Specking wetland plants. I would, if, if, if I may, I would just offer up a couple of other things based on what I've heard. I think that's one thing you guys are looking back and help. I would um, suggest that the most important thing in the short term is a stabilization plan, right. given the, just the expanse of exposed soil. If it's level, maybe it's not too much of an issue, but we're going to be approaching the end of the growing season in about a month here, and it's probably optimistic to think that the site's going to be stabilized with vegetation between now and the end of the growing season. So stabilizing it or at least getting some SME controls up on the down gradient side, I think is probably the most important thing. Even if, and if it's not a high risk site, maybe that's a simple straw wall or something like that. Um, if you have a sense of what the drainage patterns are and where the water flows. Um, but I think that should be part of any restoration plan. And I think that really should be the front end of any restoration plan is just a, an SME control plan. Would you go as far as uh, annual grass? Um, yeah, there's still time to get something like that going. Yeah, you could, you could just. Would you recommend uh, seeded netting? Um, depending on like erosion control uh, netting. Well, you know, the. Depends on. Not, not, for, not for the level side, I wouldn't. You know, it's, it's expensive and depending on the type of stuff you get, it can make more of a mess than anything else. For Strong. So I think seeding it with a, with a, um, a low cost, but native fast growing seed mix that's at least semi-shade tolerant based on what I saw in the photos probably makes sense and getting something up just to make sure that silty water isn't making its way down to the pond, the bowl. Um, if the commission wants, I, you know, I'm going to be out here most of tomorrow, I, I expect. I could spin by the site if, if the property owners are okay with that and just kind of get a sense of what the conditions are and make any recommendations if the commission wants. Okay. Sure. Is that okay with you? If this gentleman checks out the site? That's, uh, I assume so also, but I don't. It's, I'm a representative of the commission, but again, it would be up to the property. It's not my house, but. The, uh, <laughs> it's approach, but the um, town wetland give bylaw give gives us them. permission to go on the site. I would just give a shooter a heads up email. Whether they like it or not. Okay. So you can let her know where we'll be there. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to surprise anyone. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't she's believe she's in Stockholm, right? I think no, she's on. Uh, my boss. Oh, uh, uh, mama. Oh, where is she? Mama. No. <laughs> New York City is a good. Okay. Good okay. She owns the property across the street too. No, she sold it. No, Did she sell it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So could I ask, you know, in the past, we've, we've had people come in and say that they would do something as soon as possible, which is kind of an open-ended, non-definite <laughs> date. And almost always we've been disappointed. So I didn't know whether we could fix some dates here by which time you'd have a restoration plan and a plan, et cetera, you know, a reasonable time, but a definite date. Yeah. So... Even if you have to consult with your other people and email us. That I will. Um, what I wasn't sure about before this evening is if there was going to be a quantity, a number of trees and or shrubs being put back in to replace a quantity that came out. And if there was a physical number that tonight you guys were going to say, if for every often, one you took out, we want 17 back in. We often ask for two, at least two to one. 
Two to one. Oh, okay. Yeah. If everybody agrees with that, let's use yeah. what so we So if it's 12, it's 24. Yeah. You know, having a yeah. word for a landscaper once upon a time, um, and one of the one of the one of the things about planting seed as an like grass seed for a cover, you know, it was great. The company goes in, they do it, they put down the seed, and then if it doesn't do what it did today in rain, you know, it becomes a property owner that ends up having to water the lawn and so that the seed grows. And I've seen in more than one case that the owner just, you know, isn't out there watering the lawn. I don't think this owner is going to be out there watering. I, don't, I think she has a garden. She has people. Yeah. Well, I mean, just so long as that's brought to their attention that it needs to be watered. She has people. She has people. Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen people walking around there with hats people. and plastic buckets yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, she has people. But the people need to be aware that they need to water. Yes. Yeah. And I bet they have a sprinkler taking on the the ground the more of an immediate ground cover. Yes. Uh, or possibly calling in um Hubble oh uh, So could be that group that won't be Race Mountain that does the, the ground cover. No, okay. we understand that. Um, but so it, are these other folks that, the, I mean, the Whalen Nursery seems seems like they would be the positive end of this because they are the ones that are putting stuff in the ground, which is good. Yes. Um, true cut. But but are they are they going to um, be kept in the loop on all of this of that? Just how annoyed the Conservation Commission is about what's happened. I'll have to. I mean, uh, does Mrs. Fower or Ms. Fower have an idea of how annoyed we are about this? Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> yep. Okay. Does That's she important. Care? I assume, yeah. Um, yes, uh, she is. Wanted to be here, was out of town. Yeah. Appreciate she it. Okay. have another opportunity. Yeah. Yes. That Every also, other Tuesday. I mentioned Come on. that also. <laughs> yeah. And assumed there would be a site visit. That yes. maybe tomorrow, but I wasn't sure if that was going to be, there's going to be a big group and when that might happen. And she expressed that she'd like to be part of that. Uh, I would like to see it. I have not seen it. So if we could do it, I, I can't. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Kirit. And your last name? Yable. Yable. Y A P L E. But if we could schedule a site visit, we would okay. like to see it, the book visit, you know, where, how it looks now and. Karen, can I also ask, I mean, besides the 12 to 18 trees removed, what, what kind of shrubbery and all was removed as well? What? The understory was just a golden roddy uh, vegetative. There were no shrubs. It's been a standing, declining group of trees over the years. White pine that checked out, and fell and hit the house. Uh, so on and so forth. So it was more golden rod that get sort of flattened in the process than you know came out. And then uh, I made a site visit Friday, which was the first time I've been back since July, um, and it was very different to me also. New so, dust and such. So the understory was golden rod mostly. So it was it must have been partially open then if it was golden yes, rod. Yes. Yep. Um, it was hard to tell from the photographs, but it was on top, so it was stripped off of the site, correct? Correct. Okay, so that kind of expanse of flat ground was just from some equipment driving over everything? I, I think so. Or did they grow stumps out? I, so the stumps were ground. It's hard to tell from, from my in-field experience. I think there was a tool. It seemed too perfect for just driven over. That's in my opinion. So I don't know what the move after grinding to when I saw it was, but it to me felt like there was one more step to to get it to that so maybe, service. Maybe some rough grading or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would have guessed power rake. Power rake, mm. yeah. Parley rake of some just a power rake. Some sort, yeah. Mm. So can you give us a date as to when you'll be back in touch with us with your preliminary uh, findings? I just want to know when to watch for a response. Well, I think we, you know, we would like to have at least some thoughts and perhaps a preliminary plan by the next meeting. 
Yes. It's in two weeks. Yep. But that is already two weeks overdue, so just so you know. Yep. I'm having a problem here, and that is, is that you went in and by virtue of the owners or whomever's orders took down the trees. And that was pretty much the end of your job. And then it became true whatever, and then it became... Okay. I mean, it, it seems to me that somebody else other than you really needs to come in here and present a plan to us, unless you want to take that responsibility and really go under the bus. I think he said in the beginning that he was been working on the property for years, though, right? You've been? Yeah. 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 Uh, Stuff Bryce Mountain's been, been the tree group, team, arborist company on site longer than I've worked for the company. Uh, but I've been part of it for 12 years plus years now in the production production realm. Oh. So the, so uh, you're not Waylon, the only one that thinks maybe somebody else should be Yeah, I definitely part think of this. somebody else should um, be part of this. But so the Whalen nursery people, will they be the ones ultimately probably creating the creating replanting and, plan? And mobilizing and okay so and then we and we need to see them right. also. Okay. Um, they need to come in, and if I don't know what the what ideally should they be there for the for they should the be, site visit. No, well, they should it. be here for the twenty sixth. Okay, a representative of from them for the twenty sixth, and and what exactly um, what exactly function does uh, True Cut or whatever their name is? Um, what do they do? In this, in the scheme of this, this couldn't thing. think about a lot of lineup. Never okay. met them. All right. When I went Friday, I went, "Wow, uh, this has changed." And then it turned into a phone call with a property manager. Okay. Who? Because I know Whalen doesn't do stumps. And okay. They, so the property manager is he local? Is he local? I yes, I would assume so. I don't know. Could where he not make it in tonight? I do not know where on. He's a part of the people. Yeah, he's the people. he's the peeps. So can we schedule a site visit, peeps? Um, yes, we can. When would we like to do a site visit? Oh. Next week. Because I'd like to see it before I see the plan, just so I know what I'm sure. looking at. But I mean, I know you're not, you, you, you don't bear the overall responsibility for this, yes. do you? No, no, they no. Just well, I, I know, but I just want to be sure. Well, ultimately, it's the so who homeowner. Does? Well, the homeowner, but the homeowner must have an agent managing this since they seem to travel a lot. So who is like the overall manager of this project? By the caretaker. Probably the caretaker. What's it's the, it's no, not, uh, it'll get shoveled away. That's why I'm here and not Andreas. Andreas, um, is the, he the caretaker? Yes. The, does he have a last name? He does, but I don't know that I have it. No, don't have it yet. It's not Miranda, is it? I don't think so. Uh, it started with client and race mountain needing trees out, and then we worked very well with Wayland, so we would have done the middleman work. Um, to get Whalen involved. With trees are going to come out, she wants to replant. It would have been Ron and I'm not sure who from Whalen that would have. So Whalen was like a subcontractor of your company? Nope, we just do the uh, middle middleman work, the connecting of the dots. We don't, they bill her separately. We have no no touches of what they do. We just have worked together for so long that we share a ton of clients and that's why we don't plant and why they don't do tree work. So, and this is this is a bit of a hardball question, but how, do you, how does your company familiarize yourself with wetlands protection, town bylaws, those kind of things, so that this doesn't happen? Uh, I have a lot of homework to do. It's, it's really the... But is this the first time in like 12 years that you've ever had to deal with a conservation commission? You, for, on this, from this perspective, yeah. Okay, well, really? that's good for yep. you. Yeah, good for you. But it is, you know, it makes sense to look at the town by laws, look at the... Yes. Protection. Yep. And scenic mountains, since you're... You, 
yep, I have a weekly drive job that I'm basically going to shovel and walk away from now. <laughs> Based on earlier when you guys were saying Lennox stock promotion. Okay. It's not like it was up that way. That yeah, was yeah, it is. Weekly drive is a tough one. That's it. So, if that person is trying to, you have someone on the phone. I can't I hear you if you're trying to talk. Um, so, do we want to try and do the 22nd, which is Thursday? Sure. Next Thursday. Yeah. Can you do that, Karen? We will not be. What time? Uh, Any time after three is okay. Three thirty. Three thirty. I'm out of town, so I won't be there. I can do that. Okay. Um, next Thursday, twenty second. Yeah, I should be able to. Do it. I mean, I've seen it already, but I didn't go on the property. I just stayed on the edge. So. Thank you. It's nine twenty. Nine twenty one. Is it twenty one? Twenty two. Twenty two. Well, I know what I have on the 21st. Okay. What time are we right? doing that? About 3.30. 3.30. Oh, two. Okay. okay, so, and if the whale and tree people can be here, or the whale and nursery people can be there, that would be nice. Yes. And the caretaker, for sure. Yep. Um, I imagine he would want to be there anyway. Um, <laughs> we're not. No, we're not. Why is not here tonight? Because he's chicken. Because mm. they threw cute. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That bad for him. <laughs> You're a brave soul, mm. Kiernan. Tell your dad, you know. That's, he, I would have been, well, he might have come if he was in town, but yeah. I was coming no matter what. <laughs> uh, he's not long for production world. I hope that's not a you know permanent condition. And so, no, no, just oh, okay. All right, all right, good. Has put his yeah. time in. Retirement's good. Is ready yeah. to chasing retirement. Yes. Yeah, okay. aggressively. Me too. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we will see you on the twenty second, and then again on the twenty sixth. Yes. Okay. And I'll send you stuff before then um, regarding uh, a new. Great. Uh, and and or revised plans and plan. Um, I just wanted to make sure Sketzers are coming out. And then two to one. Um, and that's really up to the, the nursery to be planning that, right? If you give them those, that's not kind of up to the nursery to plan that, right? If you give them the plans. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking so that oh, the oh, available square footage of area to replant right we'll get very uh we won't be planting for long term putting a two to one back in we'll have so much quantity that we'll be looking at a 10-year plan before you're starting to need to take them as maples fill in well, so maybe it can be a tree shrub collection yes and do what makes sense yeah you know okay. if it's too if it's not enough space then you know, we're reasonable but I think the priority is what David said about stabilizing the. Uh, yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I can get out there tomorrow afternoon, and then I will provide the commission with just kind of a quick summary of what my thoughts are based on what I see. Okay. If I can make it the twenty second with the full commission, I'll do that too. But I'm not sure what my schedule that day right now. <laughs> Be able to catch tomorrow. Okay. In um, the afternoon. I'm going to give you my card if you have one. That would be great. I'll just give you a heads up. Email address to send conservation 
at stockbridge-ma.gov. Great. Thank you. Okay, we're past that, right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, what do I have it again? From good. Well, from my perspective. Thank you. You appreciate that. I Maybe you can send some stuff along. See you guys next week. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Notice in that of intent. Betsy Aubrey and Steve like. Kinberg, uh, 18 Beechwood Drive map, that one, one. Didn't they well, come in one Well. No. Oh, someone else. Well. Well, what are they going to do with the tailings? Well installation, right, for right now. And what are they going to do with the tailings? Tailings are all falling into a slurry pit. So this didn't come out so good. But anyways, this is the house. Here's Beechwood Drive. It's right here. There's a parking lot right off Beechwood Drive. There's an existing well right here that's not functioning properly and not yielding good water. So they're proposing to drill a new well. We've proposed it in this location right here. The well truck can back basically into this. We're showing that this would all be matted for the ground um, protection matting. Uh, so the truck goes in on top of, they'll place the mats on the yard. This is all yard area, all of this in here. Mm, it's squishy. It's, it's beech wood. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it is, yeah, if you just put a, pull the truck in there, you'd be in big ruts. So we're proposing to put matting down. The well is proposed to do be drilled right here. This is a slurry pit. So that's what you're asking for. Where is it typically they're pulling material out? It has to go someplace. So we have a five by five by three foot deep pit that that would go into the excavation for making that material would go here. So they'd excavate this spot here, put the material here, surrounded with erosion controls and then the slurry material would go into the pit. That's volume wise for like a 320 foot deep well, at six, six inches diameter. Um, erosion controls, so there's an intermittent stream that runs under Beechwood. This is it right here, the blue. This is all BBW wraps the backside, all of this area right in here. Um, and uh, there's a boulder to re be removed right in this location. Um, they'll just move that off to the side. No vegetation needs to be cut. There's a fence that needs to be taken down at the parking area. Um, most all of this is in a lawn area. For this area right in through here up until this all slopes very slightly to the back, the north of the property. This would be all um, wattles. And then below the, the well drilling site would all be um, plastic fencing and straw bale backing. Uh, to de decommission this well, the existing well, there's erosion control. Um, that, that typically isn't a lot of work uh, disturbance wise. So we're putting wattles in this location right here. How do they decommission the well, Mark? Typically, they're going to fill it with a grout and cut it, and cut it below grade. With grout. What? With a grout. It's like a, a cement. Oh. Yeah. You want to you want to seal the seal it so you don't. There's no introduction into any um, aquifer, basically. So that's we haven't gone through Tri Town yet. Going through this stage right here. Once it's approved, we can go ahead and get the well permit. Um, so this is the first stage of them rehabbing this house but they want to get the well done first. And then we'll come back to you with 
whatever they want to do in the future. So uh, one question, and that is um, the company that's going to drill the well, um, will they be privy to what it is that you're putting before us so that we they have some idea of what we have said is a good idea? Go to Spintet. You're going to give us, hopefully give me in order conditions, and right. they'll have to comply with that. Right. I but doubt that the well drilling company does not do all this other work. So they're not going to put the mats down. They're not going to do an excavation. Um, you know, they, that's going to be typically uh, a second uh, second company. So that'd be a landscaper. I, I guess my, my concern is, which is my can I bang on all the time, is, you know, you come in here, you put this plan before us, and we say, yeah, it's a good idea. And we give you, you know, order of conditions and whatever. But, does that ever get seen by anybody else who's actually doing the work is my concern. Part of your, I think you've done it in the past on order of conditions is that you get a letter back that the contractors sign that they've read that order of condition. Okay. I don't think that's a bad idea. Yeah. Put the burden on the homeowners. No, no clue. No, 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 no. But, uh, you know, they are the, they are the responsible party no. in the end. But the contractors are the ones who really should know these regulations and follow them. Um, but I, and I think that's a good that's a good condition to have is that the contractor reads it, understands it, and sends you a letter saying that they do that, that they that they've read it, and understand it. Good, hey, Mark. What's wrong with the water? Just curious. I, I don't know that. I don't know specifically I mean, what's going on. With anything these. we can learn, you know, about the area? They've learned, they've, they've set up on this well. Um, they've had Barnes and Kylie there, and uh, they said that they can't rehab that well, the existing well. It may be too shallow. I don't, I don't, I don't know that, Joe. So the plan is to go deeper? Yeah. With the new yeah. one, right? Yeah. I, I have, like, three quick questions. Mm -hmm. um, pretty easy to answer, I'm sure. The... Uh, so um, the slurry pit, you know, excavation pile and the slurry pit itself, they're not very far from the bordering vegetative wetland, right? None of this is very far from. No, I know it's Beechwood, and yes. I know it's, yeah. you know, it shouldn't have been built in the first place. a wetland. Yeah, but I was just curious. It looked to me like about 30 feet. Yeah, it's just actually probably a little less than that, but yeah. Yep. Yeah, less. And um, so anyway, I just wanted to check on that. And... Um, and also from the stream bank, and how the stream, again, the stream yeah. bank would be the intermittent stream yeah, the so intermittent. that's in here. So that's this is twenty scale. There's thirty feet. Thirty feet. Okay. And um, with the slurry, I know you, that you let it like settle before you. Typically, what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to discharge that into the slurry pit. They will have to excavate that out, take it off the site. And then they use the existing material to rehab oh, the original. To, the original material, put it back into the and, and rehab it. I've got you. Straw mulch it. Where, so, what do they do with the slurry? Where do they bring that? <laughs> Not stock <stockers. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Good. And properly, bring it to properly, leave. Properly. True concept. <laughs> <laughs> now, and then I just have, these should probably be obvious to me, but on the plan it says SCB4 and SCB3. We foresight has SCB four would be waddles. Okay. And typically, are twelve inch waddles because nine inch waddles everybody just steps on or runs over. Okay. Um, and the SCB three is the plastic fencing with plastic. the straw bale okay. backing. Okay, I didn't know if that was an industry it's thing not, or in house. It's just a foresight sure. plan services thing. Okay. Great. Do we want to do a site visit? Uh, oh, it's really simple. It's just a lot. I'm just trying to get it done faster. I'm okay, man. I'm okay. I mean, I know there's not you much you can do there. Huh? You want a boat on this? So. Well, I, I, I'm not pushing you to. <laughs> I mean, I how it's, it's just a really simple system. It's uh, to me, it's in a lawn area. They have to have water. They have, they to, have, have water. to have water. Yeah. And how deep is the well going to be? No. You don't know. Don't know. Don't know that. T typically, your wells are going to be like 300 feet low. Okay. We have to leave frack the cars. I don't want to frack it. <laughs> we did. Well, we got down 400 feet. We had nothing. Wow. 
I make a motion that we uh, approve this, but with the caveat that if you can find out why the other one failed, <laughs> so we can learn from You this. just want to have that information? Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll find out. And then how deep they had to go for the second one. Does it know. have PFOA or something yeah. in it? I hope, well, <laughs> should not be on nothing out there. Well, I would second that. Is that okay? <laughs> the, commission can, the commission can propose any conditions they want, and if the applicant doesn't want to... No, if possible, you know, he can get that. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I, mean, the, I can the, follow. The applicant or the permittee has to decide whether or not he or she can live with the conditions, and if, and if he or she can't, they can appeal. Well, what do you think, Mark? No, it sounds like it's, it's pretty simple. It sounds like Mark can just ask the question. Sure. I can give you. I can. I can. I can follow. I don't think we need to put that in as a condition. I just think. I think it would be interesting to know why. You could send us an email yeah. about that. My, my general opinion would be not to put conditions in an order that are directly related to the statutory interests of the right. mm -hmm. or your bylaw. Correct. But it's, a, it's not an unreasonable question. So, do we have a motion to? Uh, we did. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bye bye bye. Bye. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. I hope that was worth waiting for. Oh, yeah. What's the option? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, that it was that terrible. terrible. It needed itself, apparently. We had, um, when Brent White, Brent White, are you here? I him. Very hard, son. Is she checking up on you to make sure you're really here? Definitely. Yeah. Um, so Brent White sent us a... Um, a request for, and I don't know why it didn't come out on this sheet. She disappeared. Um, it was for a, a certificate of compliance for a project that was done in 1996. <laughs> and, um, I said, really? 1986? 1996. 90. It was a 169. Um, I'll be right back. Tells you that it was really old because we're on 500s right now. Um, so it's a certificate of compliance request. They're, um, they're selling the property next week, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> And they discovered that they don't have the certificate of compliance. They did record it and all that stuff, but it was from 1996 and it's a septic system. Oops. So normally we would do a site visit, but you know, it's either working or it's not working. Um, so whatever they did, you know, it's, it's whatever they did. 25 years ago. So yeah. <laughs> But by now you'd need it. Well, it has to be inspected for the transfer to Title V, right? Right. So it would have had to pass a Title V and all that stuff. So it's you know it's functional. So whatever the whatever the original proposal was, which we have, um, we have a letter from White saying that you know it's built substantially according to plan, um, and. Uh, so I don't know. Do we do we feel as though we want to hold them up and do uh, because they were naughty and they didn't get their certificate of compliance, or do we want to give them a break and go nah, ahead and do it? Twenty five years. Off the wow. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean this, you need the letter, and you've got it. We've got the letter white saying that they it was good, and I, I forgot who did the original. Oh, it was Marshall White did the original. Um, did the original uh, work and uh, a certain guy named Joe DeGeorge signed it. So there you go. There was a rubber stamp going around with that name. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Evans, John Pensivy, Joe DeGeorge, and I don't know who, I can't read the last name. That's so funny. So you have living proof, Joe, how long you've been on the commission. 
<laughs> so what what is your pleasure? Do you want to go ahead and, and issue it? Yes. Yeah. I make a motion we issue the certificate. I'll second it. Uh, no, aye. 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 Done. Okay. All right. Good. Then so we have it and we can sign it because we've closed it. So we have stuff to sign. And um, Lisa wanted everybody to know that she and John are now on the newly newly re renovated um, Cambusa Bog Commission, is it called that? It's not the Cambusa Bog Stewardship Committee? It, it, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think it's committee. the committee. Okay. Um, all right, so um, on the issue of the cutting along the west side of Lily Pond, which has been has come up a few times, the and west side. been trying to figure out east side, sorry, east side of Lily Pond. No, We've been trying to figure out who it was who did it, and I asked Mark and and David to look into it, but I found the enforcement order. Oh, you did okay, and, and it did. was the east side, not the west side. It was the east side. No, it was the west side. Okay. It was the west the side. side it was at. the west side. That's the side we looked at. So the previous owner's name was Beth Bradner, and apparently they lived in South Africa. And when we sent out the, um, oh, it was goodness. 11 Wheatley Drive. So when we send out, and I want to know if that was the Cowans, which we smacked them up. Sally, is that the real old yeah. one? It was the real old one of those. Do you remember if it was Cowan was 11 Wheatley Drive? Well, the house with the, the dome and the indoor swimming pool. You know which one I'm talking about now? John, you know where it is on Wheatley Drive? Yeah. It was the next one going towards White Pines. And the guy actually came in here and complained to the commission about his neighbor cutting, clear cutting, down to the water. Right, I remember that. And... Uh, that was the story on that. Well, we had early on, I remember, my early on in my tenure on the commission, so that's 25 years ago, the Cowan, Mr. Cow, Martin Cowan, because we've got a whole big app file on that, which I haven't looked at since I found this, um, clear cut, clear cut. And that enforcement order may have come about, first of all, for the, you know, for the problem, but it was the first of all the people that own land on that side. Yeah. The first thing that we heard about, and it was completely native, that whole side. And that's what disturbed the neighbor, you know, so now we've got this, you know, this lawn yeah. headed down that way. Mm -hmm. And we issued the order to try and put a stop to that at that point. And the, the order must have had a restoration plan. Well, I remember DEP was involved because I remember walking around the site with Tim McKenna. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was the date that the enforcement order was issued? This was 2020. 2020. Oh, oh, no. That's a different one. Uh, February, of two, February of 2020. So that was definitely the one that Patrick, I don't know if you're still on. Um, Patrick and Ron and I were walking on That's Lily, different. we walked on Lily Pond in the winter and we went and we saw this from the, from the pond, not from the, not from the road. And we issued the enforcement order, which I finally found. Um, and it came back, clear cutting to the shoreline of Lily Pond as this activity is prohibited under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act from the town of Stockbridge Wetland Bylaw, as well as being a violation under the tenets of the Lake and Pond Overlay District regulations under the town zoning bylaw. And it went, they were in Africa, is that? It went, it, it came back. Um, and then I, I couldn't find it. And then I finally found it. And then we were requiring them by the 1st of April of 2020 um, to uh, present us with a restoration plan. And they never responded? It came back. It was certified mail. And oh, they never signed for it? So, yeah. yeah. They said, whoops, we're not doing that. So anyway, 
Were they still in South Africa? They do not own the property anymore, so we can reissue the enforcement order to the current owners, I believe. Can we not? Do we know? Well, they inherited the violation. Yeah. If there's an active violation that hasn't yes. been addressed, then the property owner inherited it. And okay. it's not that old. So what, I'm not clear what we should do. Issue, reissue an I enforcement order? You can, you, I would say you probably should, I would reach out to them first and say, hey, you know, this this outstanding, we think this is outstanding issue on your property. Can we meet in the field and talk about it? And then that would give you guys an opportunity to put a fresh set of eyes on yeah. it to see how it looks and maybe, you know, come up with, you know, an agreement with them to, to do it. Okay. Yeah. So that is 11? Yes. Yeah, I would reach out. I would try to set up something, if, you know, not informal, informal just to, to kind of soften it's a little bit more rather than just it's a much friendlier approach rather than well, just receiving that in the mail is going to mystify them I think. and so probably scare them and yeah. create all sorts of anxiety when they have time to do it so right they're guilty. the only reason they bought the property was because it was clear cut down the yeah. <laughs> all right. and according to the people on the other side of the of the pond this has been maintained the Clear cut. Probably so, because if they got it that way, they thought, yeah, this is thought fine. it was fine. If it's a lawn, okay. I'm going to go on my lawn, right? Yeah, but, right. Yeah. Surprise. Right. <laughs> okay. So there's that. Four Grove. Four Grove, Grove Road. Chris May, who's the, um, the contractor, has asked that we go take a look at the erosion control that has been put in place before they do the demolition. So can we do that on the 22nd or is that too? I think he wants to do it right away. So if anybody is free to go up to Four Grove Road, that would be great. Four Grove. I'll try. So could I get a little more information on that, Sally? Did that come up before I came on the commission? Because I don't it, we, we They are um, rebuilding the house. They're going to demo the house. It's been approved. We've got their plans. We Everything was okay. So what are we checking on the site visit? Just the erosion control is in place. All right. Um, Tree service drawing water. We've received a report from a concerned citizen um, stating that he witnessed um, one of the local tree service people drawing water from Campusa, no. Concapot. Concapot Brook. With pictures. With pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Um, what does tree service grab water for? For watering lawns and doing other things like that. Okay. Is that we know who the tree service was? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a sticky one. Um, yeah. Got to break some law. Well, yeah. When I was a TV, I had to deal with these complaints all the time. Pool companies yeah. would drive up next to the Connecticut River and fill up gigantic tanker trucks and then go fill pools with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's a gray area. Technically, they should be in, they should be getting in front of the Conservation Commission with at least an RTA to say, hey, this is something want to do we need it for irrigation or we want to use it for irrigation and the commission can decide whether or not that's going to have an alter if it's going to alter the resource area and that's going to depend on all sorts of variables it's going to depend on the water body that they're pulling it out of it's going to depend on whether or not you're in a drought or not yeah um, it's going to depend on the methods you use to pull it out so it, it absolutely is a jurisdictional issue that they should be coming in front of the Conservation Commission about. We've well, it's work in a something resource. Something like this a, a while ago, and I think it was a tree service, and because they were, it, it, was a, it was a while ago, they were pulling water, somebody came by, they were pulling water out of Marshbrook. And, um, you know, I said, so, because it's my property that they were pulling it out, I said, what the heck are you doing? And they said, well, we do this all the time. And I said, <laughs> no, not here, not here you don't. And so I, we, I wrote to them at, at, from the commission and said, uh-uh. Um, <clears throat> but, but there are other concerns that I had personally is where has that hose been? You know, has it been in some place that has zebra mussels like the Housatonic River? Um, 
how do how do they filter? Are they sucking up critters when exactly. they do there's that? Screen, there's a screen on the end of the hose. Yeah, exactly. So there are a lot of there are a lot of issues that might be mm-hmm. yep. worrisome. Yep. And they're not the fire department. And how are they the response? Are they just pulling up on the side of the road? Are they yep. in some That's the picture was cutting a little bit of an access path to get closer? You know, these are all the questions that you would have if somebody came in front of you yes. in that proposition. So what penalties can we inflict for this? Well, I think we just write them a letter at this point and say it's been reported that you're doing this and you need to come before the Conservation Commission if you're going to do this in Stockbridge. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I would start there. That's a good word. I think that's good. Yeah. So then it's recorded. Now, is there a place that ideally we would want them to do it from if we were going to allow it, like get the reservoir? Versus a. I don't. I mean, I think that that's opening a can of worms just generally. This is the other thing you want to consider. You could consider issuing an enforcement order. That's going to get their attention more than a letter. But perhaps you just concern trying to argue with it. No, 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 what concern me was that? I wouldn't necessarily offer up what you're. I can see. I can understand why you're saying that, but I don't think you want to promote that kind of activity. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I just see when I'm driving the back roads, all those places for the fire trucks to pull in and yeah. suck out of the street. That's different, though, isn't so, it? Right. Okay. So what if they drain a fire pond and then it's a fire the next right. day? It's not made up for the fire department. See, you know, these are all the questions that you guys would have the ability to ask if someone properly came in front of the commission with a proposal to do this. So, yeah. So should, do you think we should... Hydrants. I wonder if we should get a list of the various tree services and... Send out a letter just generally saying pool services, pool services mostly. And saying, okay, so it's come to our attention that some companies in town three trucks worth are doing this, and we want you to know that if you are, you need to come before the Conservation Commission but, before you do it again. I think to do both, to send out the letter to all of them, but to also call help on it. Yeah, they, you know, we know they did it. Yeah, the pictures, and, and they try to justify it. Right, so they could do it. So I think we need to yeah. pick them out in particular and say no. Did we no you up can't. before? I think for the pool service, Mike Buffoni was telling me they were actually selling the water out of the reservoir to some. There was a fee for them to do it, and they were paying it. Well, they're charging someone to irrigate their shrubs and trees, and they're charging someone to deposit water in a pool. No, no, but Mike works for the town. He's right, well, anyone right. who's doing this, right, they're doing it for commercial reasons, right? right? They're not sucking right. water. But Mike was permitting them to do this. Yeah. For a fee. Right, right. Oh, out, of the, out, of the, out of the reservoir. Well, Adam, so, Adam Select Woman, I think this is something you need to look into. <laughs> oh, it was, it was at one of these meetings where, where it was being discussed. Yeah. About about with this probably the Stockbridge Bowl Association. That's what he's on, right? Yeah, it didn't happen. Sure. Right, right. And he, they were just saying how he was having problems with one of them and wanted to stop it. Yeah. It seems to be sort of you're on that one now. They just go to the town garage and they can fill up right there. That's what happens. I mean, I've seen mm-hmm. pool. Oh, they do. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it. Was oh, is that where it is? The garage, oh, not the just hook up to a well. They hook up to the so line water. coming out of the reservoir, and it's all treated water, probably. And I know easy they dump peasy. water, the, uh, and it's monitored. They can monitor the town can monitor waste waste and, and sell it to them. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, that's different. That's, that's different. Well, maybe that's that sounds like a great approach. Is if there's mm-hmm. already a repository yeah. there and a, a mechanism to yeah. them know that hey, you and they might be thrilled it. with it. Yeah. Not not to have to pull over and but get they, caught filling up their tank where they actually can pay for it. <laughs> they may not want to pay for it. But if they've given if they're given the option and then they still go do what they're doing, then you know you can ratchet the heat up if you want to force an order or Yeah. Okay. All right, well I will send them a letter. And then one oh eight Interlaken Road is um the Wellencamp property that is the old boathouse. The old boathouse? The old boathouse, North of Henry's. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if there's only a couple of us who know this property, but it is, it's an, I think it's, I think it's the or Williams. No, it's next door to Peter or, or just a couple doors up. But I think it's, it may be the oldest 
boathouse on the lake. And so it has serious significance in terms of historic value. Mm -hmm. But we went down and looked at it a couple of years ago when Greg Wellenkamp bought it. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to do some stuff with to the boathouse that we said, uh-uh, um, because it does hang out over the lake, the boathouse. And it is not in terrific shape. And, and I think, I think um, well, Annie Selke wants to buy it. And so she was, she was asking what she could do with it. Um, are we going to, would they require um, for Lilling Pond? No, no, this is, uh, this is 108 Interlake and Road. So she, put it, she wants to buy the whole property. She wants to buy the property. Craig's yeah. selling it. So Sun she wants to buy it. Northwest. I, I've seen it, John. So um, she was asking what could she do with the property if she bought it, what kind of restrictions were there. And I remembered that when we, when we permitted him to redo the driveway, that we, were, we had really serious restrictions on how wide the driveway could be mm -hmm. and a couple other things. There was a barn and she was wondering if she could remove the barn and um, she wanted to know if she could paint the, the house a different color and a couple other things which were, weren't our thing to talk about but so the good thing is Sally. that she's asking the question yes she is that's and the, that's good and but but I, I i wrote back to her and told her that i that i thought you know obviously we could work with her and the other committees could work with her but that there were going to be issues that she was going to so have to do why don't we go look at it with her yeah have a conversation right exactly yeah. so you um they driveway <laughs> bisected a wetland that's right and part of the deal was that they put in a couple of good sized tubes Right. Connect them. That's this right. Wasn't that long ago, by the way. It was yeah. just, you know, a year or two ago. <laughs> Did they get put in? Central. I don't know. They just put a real nice cedar roof on that house, right? Right next to it. Maybe. No, that's, mm. that's Peter Williams' house. Well, I think. That's Peter Williams' house, I would think. The stone it's a right next stone, to stone boat house. Yeah. That, that's, that's Peter. That's okay. That's Peter's on the historic commission, so he would have, you know, he would have knowledge of what would need to be done in order to maintain it as an historic property. Um, I'm not sure. It looks like it's, you can't pull a boat into it. There's a lot of, it's all dirt really almost, right? But this one is north of that. Oh. Yeah. It, it, I don't think you can even really see it from the water anymore. Oh. I think it's got overhanging trees and stuff. I, I, I don't is, is My memory is kind of vague on that. Next to the boat launch, isn't it? The, the state program. It's like the next South of Peter? Yeah, yeah, South of Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm backwards. But yeah, it was a tough, it was, it, but it, it's 108. And so she, anyway, she was asking what, um, she was asking what could be done with the property. And I just told her that there were going to be a lot of things that she was going to have to deal with in order to but do it. Could she could probably do some it. nice things. So she'd do a great job with it. Um, but but I think that uh, that it's going to be it's going to be a big hairy deal if she's going to do it because she's got all kinds of this regulations. Is the boat on Stockbridge Bolt, yeah. existing boaters. Um, yeah. So, the, so it's grandfathered, but if it predates 1972, oh yeah, grandfathers the X. So the it only does. thing the Spectre raises is Chapter 91, right? Not, which is not you guys don't have to worry about right. that, but that may be a good. If specific to the boathouse, that may be a good first step for them to say, go talk to DEP about Chapter 91. Okay, I'll tell her that. that kind of shifts the initial part of that burden away from you guys. Right. Because we can't, you, you won't be able to make an important decision under the Wildlands Protection Act unless DEP says, this, you know, maybe it has a license too. It may already have a license. It's mm -hmm. awesome. I'm like, I wouldn't no, bet on no, that. I can't put it in yeah. that. Um, so the next mm -hmm. question is, does it meet the Although that minimum size, you know, so I would send them. Okay, I'll tell. I'll recommend that to her. Yeah. Okay. So, one last question. Yes. Um, performance standards are they done, or did we need to vote on? Did we? Last? You sent it out. You sent it out. Came back from Donna. And it, and we it came to the commission. Came. I, I saw one thing on it. It, it. There's like a table of contents, and then it says definitions. And there's nothing after the definitions. 
and then it goes into the first section. And it's as if the definition heading got put in there by accident. I can say because the definitions are at the end. They're supposed to be at the right. end, right? And I they found, come right after the table of contents. I found one typo that I sent back to you, but I, I would like to make a motion. Okay. We were gonna we were gonna ask um, Dave and Mark to look at it too. Okay. So did for you see one it? last round. That, did it get to you? The performance standards. I don't did you copy me in the email? That I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. Yeah, let me let me check on that. Okay. If I didn't let me know and I'll send it to you. So we're close. Yes. One other piece of business I sent you for a request about cutting the dead trees at, cutting trees, uh, yes. at uh, the common area of my association, my connection. Right. So we were gonna you were gonna get somebody to um, put they're tagged tags or something on them. They are tagged. I looked at them tonight. Are they? they up here. Good. Well and there's and there's one that's kind of concerning because it's it's thoroughly dead. And there's like a walkway, it's um, what you call it, a ramp. Yeah. And uh, it leans like right over the ramp. And then there's a second one across the road, um, I think there was photos, that is clearly dead and that leans right over the road as well. So uh, they're really things that kind of keep located. And the other two, one is, you know, it's kind of like a, Seven foot tree that didn't quite establish itself and died in some of the backyard, and uh, and then the last one, the only one I think we would have any question about is there's one down by the water shore, and, but that's also it's not quite dead, but it's pretty pretty close. This one's down. This one's down. So it's how close is it to the water? How close are they to the water? Uh, that's probably. 15 feet from the bank, 10 feet from the bank. So yeah. it's doing, the it's roots are stabilizing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, it is dead. And my thought was it, eventually a dead tree is going to go over in a storm. And when it does, it's going to yank up some soil with it. So probably better, better to take care of it now and replace it with something that's going to stabilize yeah, the bank. If you leave the stump, I mean, leave oh, the yeah, roots. Yeah, it would absolutely yeah. do that. Yeah, the roots. Here, I'm going to but yeah, this is, this is the like backyard tree that you know. Obviously, yeah. someone planted it and didn't quite take. This, this is in the, our common area, so it's Mackinac Shores Road is a loop. It's in the center of the loop, right onto the lake. But now I'm asking, what are they? What are oh, where are the trees? Yeah. They're maples. I think. They're well, the, the, the small ones I'm pretty sure are maple. The tall one, Mike, is not a maple. It's maybe an ash of some sort. I wonder why the maple's in the The maple is weird because, yes, it's like there are little buds that look like it was all ready to go, and then it's just. Yeah. I don't know. Is it now? It looks. Yes, it's dried up, and you know, there's just nothing there. Is it dead? Well, I didn't have time to establish a, a decent root system, especially this summer, I'd kill it. I don't, I don't think it did. I mean, it didn't ever leave out this year. I mean, it just yeah, it, yeah. it from get there. Yeah. So, are we? Do we think that this is fine? Yeah. If you leave, if you leave the roots and uh, plant something else. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. So do we want to? Do we want to ask them to be replaced? Yes. Right? You're okay with that? We're okay. We're okay. Yeah. If it, I think it sort of needs to be again because it's yeah. the one open area where people can play games and stuff. I don't think we could do a two to easily okay. do a two to one. But, we but wet, with native wetland. And the one near the road, you know, that's so close to the road that I don't think you'd want to replace it. There's a tree right behind it, and then it's got it's almost, a double, almost a double, like a double tree, you know, and. Uh, I think the competition of one finished off the other, and that's <laughs> leaning over the road. So I don't think we want to take it over there. Yeah. <laughs> my hands are so and we've got the stupid hand is supposed to be yeah. sort of waiting for the okay to do it. All right. Mary said last time I talked to Mary, she said you were flat on your yeah, back. Yeah. Oh. So. She'll send you the performance standard which has been in progress for eons. She may have already done that. I'm, I'm, yeah, 
uh, if I can actually did, I apologize. Oh, that's okay. I've done before tonight, but we will, I'll show you. Thank you. Thank you. And it was just if there was anything in there that you didn't think was going to be approvable by DEP. And those were those draft special conditions for draft performance standards for what exactly? They were they were codifying in effect what we want to see from our applicants that aren't necessarily in your bylaw yes. yeah oh. it would be under the bylaw okay. yeah that aren't necessarily covered by the yeah, well, section it doesn't really matter if no i understand but nevertheless you know yeah and yeah. yeah. town council reviewed them too okay. after after we yeah. their draft mm -hmm. Um, Sally, before, uh, since you guys are signing on, if you happen to have a We did, um, and, or at least we got a we got an email saying that they they agreed. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got that from them too. Give um, this back to her. Or is someone, can someone from the commission just sign? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, sure. I, I brought another copy. Who has to do that? Whoever on the commission. Besides, he or she's got the authority to do that. And Sally, what about these? They're jurisdictional. I went and looked at that. You're up for it. No issue there. Then you should probably I mean, sign it because you it's want It's high and dry. I had a question about a jurisdictional. Each one in Paris. Tom, the um, Dugway Road. Yeah. <laughs> Alex Swan. Yeah. No, it's a. I didn't have it. Yeah, it, was, it was demolishing the barn, but it was. Um, I think it was 224 feet from the from Mohawk Brook. The start. We took it. And also, it's kind of it on the it's kind of deceptive in that it's really not demolishing the barn. It's demolishing the part of the house that used to be a barn. Oh, really? That's what I gather. It looked part of the, it's mostly demolished already. Self-demolished? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's self-destructive. <laughs> okay. All right. I have three. Yes. Okay. All right. Then I guess we're good. Can you adjourn? Right. Um, do you want to make a motion to adjourn? A motion would adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.